I think he's one of the best, yeah. Well funny. He's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I like him, but I think he's a bit naughty in EastEnders. <laughs> I don't like him doing that to Peggy. <laughs> He is a naturally funny man. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He's the main man, he's my hero. He's the governor. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it, the one, the only, Mike Reed! Jesus Christ, like Pete and Tony, him, I cried, say. Circus Tavern, long time since I've been here, about two months ago. Upstairs in the bleeding disco. The music was about 100 decibels. I've got in here with my mate, there's a bird sitting in the corner, I walked over and went, do you want to dance? She went, I can't hear you. I said, do you want to dance? She said, I can't hear you. Do you want to dance? She said, I don't like the music, and I don't like the club, and I don't like you. Now, what did you say? I said, you look fucking fat in that dress. <laughs> it ain't changed. The dressing room's so small, I've been in bigger women. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I went to the barber today, he said, you're going bald, Mr. Reed. I said, well, fucking hurry up, then. <laughs> What's the difference between a prostitute and a drugs dealer? Well, a prostitute could always wash her crack and sell it again. <laughs> this, listen, this duck booked into a hotel, this duck, with his bird. They've gone upstairs, the duck's run a receptionist. Can you send up a Durex? The receptionist says, I put it on your bill. He said, I ain't a fucking pervert. <laughs> <laughs> Two girls were sitting in the cinema. One said to her mate, Ian Gertz, she went, what? She went, listen, listen. <laughs> she said, this geezer sitting next to me she went, what? She went, nip, 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 nip. <laughs> This geezer sitting next to me is having a wank. <laughs> she said, come on, where moves? She said, I can't, he's got my aim. <laughs> Cheer about the professor that invented the self-lubricating pussy. <laughs> Took it home with his old woman, she unwrapped it. Said, what am I supposed to do with this? He said, teach it to cook and fuck off. <laughs> What's the difference between a penis and a bonus? Well, your wife will always blow your bonus. <laughs> fella walked out of a fish and chip shop. He's gone back two minutes later. He said to the fella behind the counter, was this fish cooked? He said, yes, why? He said, he's eaten all the fucking chips. <laughs> Fella walked into the dot, he's got a cricket ball stuck up his ass. Doctor said, how's that? He said, don't you fucking start, he said. <laughs> Talking about that, listen. Talking about that mate of mine last week, he's fell down the stairs, he's fell on the fucking vacuum cleaner. He's stuck up over his Harris, right up there. They took him to wasp, but well, they couldn't get it out. I rang up a day later, I said, there's my mate, a vacuum cleaner stuck up his ass." Oh, he said, he's picking up nicely. <laughs> Fellow walked in the door, he said, Doc, can you get AIDS from a toilet seat? Doc, I said, only if you sit down before the other geezer gets up. <laughs> Classic stories. 
Geezer went to the doctor, the doctor examined, he said, I've got to tell you, mate, he said, you've got a special strain of AIDS called HIV 556. He said, what does that mean? He said, what does it mean? You'll be dead within three days. He went home, he said, Mum, I've got HIV 556, you'll be dead within three days. She said, don't worry, son, come down to Bingo Hall. He went down to Bingo Hall, he won everything. Four corners, any line, full house. Up come the national grid. £78,000 he won. The Bingo caller said, son, I've never known anybody so lucky in my life. He said, lucky? <laughs> lucky? I got HIV 556, fuck me, said the bingo called you won the raffle as well, he said. <laughs> Another geezer walks in the doctor, he said, Doc, every time I sneeze, I get hard on. <laughs> doctor said, what are you taking for it? He said, fucking snuff. <laughs> Another geezer walks into a chemist, he walked up to the geezer behind the counter, he said, do us a favour, son, he said, what's the matter? He said, I've got some trouble with my dick, I want some ointment. The chemist said, what? Trouble with your dick? He said, not only do I have lady assistants, I have lady customers, there's no need for that sort of language. He said, I'm sorry, mate, what should I say? He said, say there's something wrong with your arm, your leg, call me to one side, tell me what you really want. He said, I'm sorry, fucking trappy. <laughs> He said, can you serve me now? He said, no, you go away and come back when you've got some manners. He came back the next week. He said, uh, Doc, he said, I want something with me arm. The doctor said, what's wrong with it? He said, I can't piss for it. <laughs> Fellow was going bald, went to the bleeding place. He said, I want a wig made. The geezer said, he said, are you in luck or what? He said, we've got a new revolutionary method. He said, we make that wig from your own hair. He said, what are you talking about, you fucking ice cream? <laughs> I haven't got any bleeding hair. He said, no, 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 no. What we do, we take the hair from your ass and make it into a wig. He said, turn it in. He said, I'm telling you. I took the hair from his ass, made it into a wig. The geezer went away as happy as Larry. He rang up a week later. He said, Doc, he said, that uh, wig you made out of the hair of my ass. Doctor said, yeah, anything wrong with it? He said, I should be so it just fucking blown off. <laughs> Two woofters on a boat playing badminton. Yoo-hoo. <laughs> Yoo-hoo. <laughs> One's fell over the wall when he's floating about in the water. Help, he said, help, he said. <laughs> oh, he said, Seth, are you all right? <laughs> Fucking sis. <laughs> no, he said, he said, I'm not all right. He said, hang on, I'll throw you a boy. He said, don't fuck about, I'm drowned. <laughs> couple of bleeding, really trumpy months I've come out of the house tonight, I'm coming here tonight, I've gone two miles from the house, I've gone round a bleeding corner, there's a copper stand in the middle of the road like that, I thought well, he's never going to be strong enough. <laughs> I've stopped, he went, uh, good evening squadron leader, having trouble taking off, aren't we? I said, what are you talking about? He said, you know you were doing 90 miles an hour. I said, I ain't fucking been out an hour. Oh, he <laughs> oh, said, cocky bastard, eh? Give me your name. I said, piss off. <laughs> what am I going to use? <laughs> he took me down the neck. He said, have you got a police record? I said, yeah, I've got walking on the moon. I looked around this building, I see all these photographs. I said, what are all these photographs here? He said, they're all photographs of wanted criminals. I said, why don't you fucking nick them when you took their photos? <laughs> and I know the way, listen, I know the way there, but when I've got to the bleeding nick, I mean, it's from me right out of cog, it? And I'm trying to get my way around the black double. The M25 is chock-a-block. I'm right in a bleeding state here. And I've, like all of us, anybody out here, male or female, if you've got a bleeding drive, on the odd occasion, you've got to ask directions. I always get the village idiots. <laughs> I see this young fellow, I say, excuse me, son, how do you get to the circus tavern? He said, my brother takes me. I've pulled a 
away and I swear to God, I know it was my fault because I hit the geezer from behind. I bumped into a little pink Volkswagen. This geezer got out and went, oh, he said, no, he said. <laughs> he said, look at you done to my car, he said. I said, hang on, pal, it's just a tiny little dent. He said, a bloody big dent, he said. I said, turn in. He said, it's going to cost you £100. I said, £100, £100, arseholes. Oh, he said, if you want to settle out of court. <laughs> I've got here, like, I've rushed in a bleeding toilet. I'm breaking my neck with a Fraser. As I've gone in there, a geezer coming next to me, undone his flies, this monstrosity is fell out. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I just made it. I said, fucking make me one, would you? I said, God. <laughs> I've seen a couple of people here, and I ain't seen for a long time. One was a girlfriend of mine. Oh, maybe 15 years ago. We was, we was caught for about four years. And I'm standing on the corner. I'm, she's married now, got kids and that. And we're having a nice little chat. We used to have a wonderful sex life. We was talking about the things we used to get up to. And her husband's come out in the bleeding crowd. He's out there somewhere. He's kicked her right on the Jack and Danny. What up? <laughs> you spiteful bastard. And he broke two of my fingers. <laughs> Other mate. <laughs> this other mate of mine, I ain't seen him long time. He's got a stutter. I went, oh, you tell me when I'm fine. I said, you still caught in that very pretty girl you used to be out with? No, he said, last week it was off. I said, what happened there? He said, I went round to take her out and she was upstairs getting ready. So I was talking to her mum and while we was... While we was talking, the, the cat was licking his bird, licking his bird, licking his bird, licking his It was licking his licking his back, and I said to her, "Mum, I said, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, I wish you could do that." But by the time I got it out, he was licking his ass. <laughs> bleeding great time three months ago, me and four geezers went over to Amsterdam and I know it's not exactly a man's place because girls can have a lot of fun over there, but Jesus Christ did we have a laugh. Went over to see that Pavarotti. What a miserable bastard. <laughs> Don't like you joining in. <laughs> no. No. We, we've got pissed out of their brains, we're on them bloody joints things. And you know sometimes when you go out, you've been in a place, you've never been in before, but you know there is something wrong. I'm done with it. We're in a puff club. <laughs> there's a notice on the toilet door, beware of puffs. I've got it. There's a notice on the mirror, beware of puffs. There was a message on the floor, I bent down to look at it. It said, you've been warned, swine. <laughs> This wolf to come in with a, with a geezer went, he said, do you know what he said? He said, <laughs> I'm getting a bit too fucking good at this, is it? <laughs> he said, do you know what he said? They call me Sweetie Potty. <laughs> he said, what are you talking about? He said, you can put any sweet in my body, he said, and I'll tell you what it is. He said, when you're in luck, he said, I went out with the kids today, dropped his strides. This fella dropped his strides, bent over, this geezer's got out a toffee. He went, what's that? He went, mm hmm, mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's a toffee, he said. He said, when you are sharp, he got out of Murray Mint. He went, what's that? He went, <laughs> he said, that's a Murray Mint, he said. He said, you are on the ball, son. He undone his flies. He went, what? what's that? Oh, he said, that's a fucking treat. <laughs> He said to this geezer, he said, you've got to try it. He said, no, sod that, mate. He said, no, he said, you must, you must, you must try it. 
No, he said, so that. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, you try it. If you don't like it, you shout. If you like it, you sing. The geezer went, I'll have a go. He dropped his stride, just woofed away, wallop. This geezer went, oh, oh, me. Her name is Meg Ferrara. <laughs> oh, man. Then the police raided the club. I thought, well, that's all I bleed and need. They didn't nick anybody. They got two pounds fifty each for their truncheons. <laughs> two things you mustn't say in a puff club. One, toss you for a drink. Don't fucking say that. <laughs> Number two, it's fucking hot in here. <laughs> don't say that. I don't like working on these wooden platforms. My brother had an arsy accident one of these. He went right through it, wallop. And a bit of rope round his neck. He might have broke his legs, you know. <laughs> Very trumpy. I know gay people nowadays. I mean, you know, everybody sees gay people nowadays, but it's an effect. And anybody out there at my age will, will, you know, will own up to this. I mean, I didn't know what a puff was when I was 18. They kept it to themselves, didn't they? Then they brought a law out, it's legal. Any more fucking laws, it'd be compulsory, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey? First time I ever saw one, I was signing up for the bleeding army. And there was three geezers in front of me, and the geezer, you know, directly in front, it's a little bit mincy, but I didn't know what it meant. He said, went up the first one, he went, what's your name? He went, McCoy. All right, McCoy, what do you do for a living? He said, I'm a puff. He said, what? He said, a puff. He said, what do you mean a puff? He said, well, I work in a candle factory, so when I puff, uh, puff, uh, puff out the candles, puff, puff, puff out the candles. <laughs> All right, next, what's your name? He said, McCoy. He said, any relation to him? He said, no. He said, what did you do in Civic Street? He said, I'm a puff, sir. He said, I love a bleeding puff. Do you work in a candle factory? No, he said, I work in a dress factory, sir. When the chiffon comes up all round the dresses, I get rather a large, uh, like, air dryer, and I puff up all the chiffon. I'm known as a puff. <laughs> Next, what's your name? He said, Mackay. <laughs> he said, another bleeding Mackay. What did you do in Civvy Street? He said, I'm a puff, he said. He said, another bleeding puff. Do you work in a candle factory? No, he said, sod that. No, he said, no. Decidedly no, he said. He said, you work in a dress factory? And he said, no, I don't. He said, what are you then? He said, I'm the real fucking McCoy. <laughs> no way the place. Everywhere you go. <laughs> God, Jesus Christ, signing up with that bloody army with them woofters. There was bunches of them. It was like, at, at the medical, we all had to strip off, and it was bloody freezing. January, in the middle of it. We ain't got a stitch of clothes on. All I've got is half inch and a dozen wrinkles. <laughs> we was playing that bleeding game leapfrog to keep warm. <laughs> Threw the puff out, he weren't fucking jumping on enough of all that. <laughs> and it was a tough game. Paratroopers, the next morning, we're all out there. Sergeant come out, we're all in the line. Everybody dropped their strides. We all dropped their strides. You've got this rattan cane. He went up with the first one, he's hitting right on the helmet. Wallop! <laughs> he said, ah! He said, did that hurt, lad? He said, no, sir, it didn't. He said, why not? He said, I'm a paratrooper. He said, that's what I want to wear. That is what I want to wear. He went up the next one, he went, crunch! The guys went, oh, turn it in. <laughs> He said, did that hurt, lad? He said, no. He said, why not? He said, I'm a paratrooper. He went up with his wolf and he went, crunch! He said, did that hurt? He said, no, he said. <laughs> he said, why not? He said, the fellas behind me, he said. <laughs> and then jumping out the plane and then parrot marred, you know, we all jumped off of that scaffold and that was all right. Then we get up there, this woofter wouldn't go. He went, no, I thought that. He said, look at the distance. No, no, fuck that, he said. <laughs> <laughs> and he was telling his mate about it afterwards. He said, and I wouldn't jump, he said. And all of a sudden, this big black sergeant come up behind me and done his flies and got his thing out. He said, you don't jump, man. I'm going to shove this right up your tuckers. His friend said, did you jump? Oh, he said, a little bit. He said, yes. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. 
I come back from America last week, and I'm not, I'm not a great flyer. None of us, I don't, you know, a lot of people say they like flying. I'm not a great flyer. And we're coming back on a jumbo 747, I might add, nearly 400 people. We're not talking about a two-seat assessment here. 400 people. All of a sudden, I've looked round, and I've heard this tapping coming up the hill. I've had a look, four ring of dark glasses, captain's hat. I said, you're the pilot? He said, yes. I said, but you're blind, aren't you? He went, yes. I went... <laughs> He said, now come along, some modern technology, all my instruments are in Braille, there's nothing to worry about. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I said, how do you taxi the plane out on the runway? He said, that's all done by my co-pilot, so he taxi the plane out and I take over. I went, <laughs> what happens then? He said, well, I just push the control forward and away we go. I said, hang on a minute. <laughs> How do you know when to take off? He said, well, as you know, sir, blind people have got extra sensory hearing. And as soon as I hear all of the passengers go, fuck it hell! I pull the stick back and... <laughs> do you know what? Listen. <laughs> do you, know, you know something that amazes me? That bleeding safety crap. Anything goes wrong with a plane, when you hear the word brace, brace, <laughs> put your head between your legs. If I could put my head between my legs, I wouldn't leave the fucking house. <laughs> this, when you turn that noisy, Phone goes in a plumber's flat, our bar's 12, Sunday night. He gets out of bed, grumbling and moaning, goes round, knocks on the door, door opens, pretty little girl there. He said, what's the matter, darling? She went, I'm, I'm sorry to bring you up at this time of night. She said, but me bath's stuck and it's running and running and running. It's keeping me awake and I'm frightened it'll overflow. I know, oh, you know, Christ almighty. He went and he done the job, he come out. He said, all right, baby, that's finished. It's 10 to 1 now. Didn't take me long, it's 100 quid. She went, I ain't got 100 quid. He said, no, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. Here. Just you know, hold the phone here a minute. Listen, Donnie, he said, you've called me out 20 miles 12 Sunday night. I've come round, I've done the job. It's well worth 100 pounds. I'm not taking liberties with you. She said, I haven't got 100 quid. I've only got 75 quid. Can't we work it off another way? Oh, he said. <laughs> Let's have a look. <sighs> I've come the Geary fault. That would do. <laughs> he said, Lion and Ben. She's laid on the bed, legs quarter past nine. <laughs> He's dropped his trousers. Well, let me tell you, has he got some slack or what? <laughs> <laughs> He's walked over to his bag. He's picked up the bag and he's got a load of big washers. And he's slipping them all over his wink. <laughs> she said, what are you doing? He said, you ain't getting all this for 25 fucking quid, though. <laughs> White fella in a lift, the door closed, he's just at the door closed, and this big black guy got in, he went, hello! The white guy went, hello. He said, I want to tell you, I stand six foot six, I weigh 350 pound, I got a 20 inch dick, my right ball weighs three pound, and my left ball weighs three pound, and my name is Turner Brown. The white fella fainted. He's come around 10 minutes later, and the black guy said, you okay, man? He went, yes, he said, what did you say? He said, I stand six foot six. I weigh 350 pound. I got a 20 inch dick. My right ball weighs three pound and my left ball weighs three pound. And my name is Turner Brown. The white fella said, thank God for that. I thought you said fucking turn around. <laughs> The Queen is going around the hospital. The Queen's going around the hospital. She came up to a fella in the bed. She went, hello, my man, what's wrong with you? I said, I've got a ball of me plums, Your Majesty. <laughs> to the Queen! <laughs> the matrons moved the Queen away. She went back at this fella. She went, you stupid bastard. <laughs> oh, she spoke English, this matron. 
He said, what's the matter? He said, you don't tell the Queen you had a ball on your plums. He said, what should I say? He said, tell the Queen you had a ball on your arm, a ball on your leg or something. Four months later, Princess Margaret's going around the same hospital, come up to the same geezer in the same bed. I said, hello, my man. What's wrong with you? I said, uh, uh, I said, I've got a ball on my arm. She said, I'm glad to hear your bollocks are better. <laughs> <laughs> picture, picture the scene. Our bar's five at night and he's blowing a gal when he's teeming down the rain. This postman's got his last letter left. He's soaked to the skin. He's stooped over at a 45 degree angle into the teeth of this gal, staggering down his country road until eventually he comes to this little thatched cottage. He opens the gate, puts a letter in the box, he turns back at the gate, and all of a sudden he hears this terrible snarling. He looks round, there's a bleating great rock vial, a snap out in his throat. All of a sudden the wind is sharp, this little grey old woman stuck her head out the window she said don't worry darling he's all right don't worry about it kick his balls <laughs> and then what <laughs> she kick his balls he likes that <laughs> well this post went on oh, no. size 18 dr martin still toe caps he went crash this rock violin went oh. <laughs> little old lady said you're in trouble now he said, why is that? I meant his balls on the lawn. Irish fellow walked into a bar. He said, can I have an orange? The barman said, still orange? He said, yes, I haven't changed me fucking mind. There's a lorry going down the road for eight miles. He's being towed by a paddy in a bloody car. Onk, 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 onk. Eventually, the driver pulled over. He got in. He said, what's the matter with you? He said, you're losing your load, sir. He said, fuck off, I'm gritting. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two Irish fellas walking along the road. One said, Mick, would you come over here? There's a headstone here of a man who lived till he was 118 years old. He said, Jesus Christ, shame as you're right. What was his name? He said, Miles from London. <laughs> <laughs> Not fair with the Irish, is it? <laughs> Irish fellow wanted to change his name. He's got a Somerset house. He went to the commissioner and said, I want to change my name. Commissioner said, when you go through that door there, through another set of doors, you see a girl at a desk, you'll change your name, will you? He's gone through the through doors, he's gone up in the school, he went, I want to change my name. I said, very well, what is your name? He said, Patrick Shithouse. I said, I see him, what do you want to change it to? He said, Michael. I've got to tell you. I did a show last week up in Manchester, right? So I get up there, I find out where the club is, I'm just pulling the car into the car park, getting me bleeding suit out, and all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see this young fella walking around, he's got a set of car keys in his hand with his flies open. Up coming this cop, he said, what are you doing, young man? He said, I'm looking for my car. Cop, I said, where'd you see it last? He said, on the end of these fucking keys. <laughs> He says, someone must, someone must have nicked it. Copper said, never worry about that young man. Do you know your flies are open? He said, they've nicked me fucking girlfriend too. <laughs> well, I, have, I have pulled this bird, Jesus Christ. You know, I'm, I'm talking about us fellas in general. Look, the more light hour we have, the more we think we can pull a bird, right? Well, I've pulled this one, but no wonder I've pulled it. It is so ugly. Oh, I can have a word with yourself. Everybody's entitled to be ugly. This girl about abused the privilege. Oh. I've got her in a motor car, I mean, get, get in the car, darling. She went, you know what? Every time I look in the mirror, I feel sick. I thought, well, there's nothing wrong with your fucking eyes. 
She's got in the car, I said, keep your head inside the window, Don. I don't want people to think it's a cattle truck. You know, <laughs> well, I haven't noticed till she was getting in the car the size of this girl's ass. It was massive. I've got it in the back. I'll give you an idea how big her ass was. I took her knickers down and her fucking ass was still in them. <laughs> hey! Hey! Anyway, there I am, right, knickers off, legs ten, quarter past nine, because I enjoy the view, yeah? So... So, well, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. It's all right, thank you very much, but don't keep saying it. I said, I only said it once, that was a fucking echo. <laughs> She said, you know, I've got a small organ. I said, well, he's never fucking played in a cathedral before, has he? I <laughs> said, have you taken precautions? I said, yes, I've tied my feet to the steering wheel. <laughs> she, she got this condom out of her bag. Well, she's torn the top off. When she's got it out, it's got all spikes on it. Lumps and wobbly bits and wobble. I said, what's that for? She said, I get more pleasure out of it that way. I turned it inside out. I thought, fuck it, why should she have all the fun? <laughs> she... She's... She's got me on the back seat, right? And she's sat on my lap. For want of a better word, I'm fucking trapped. <laughs> On the window. Copper. Good evening, sir. Oh, what can I do? I said, what do you want? He said, blow into this. I said, piss off. I've just thrown it out. <laughs> the girl said to him, why don't you fuck off? He said to me, I'm nicking you. I said, you're nicking me? What for? He said, for having an offensive person on your weapon. <laughs> he nicked me. Two days later, I pulled another bird. Nice bird, bit lucky. No, I'm not an old painting, but you know, on the odd occasion, I get a bit lucky, right? I've got this bird, got back to a place. I know it's a fad with you girls nowadays. The whole bedroom was full of all these fluffy toys. There were gonks and gorillas and fucking lions and tigers all hanging all over the place. Well, have I give this bird the treatment or what? <laughs> I've snarled at the busby. I've adorned the trapper's hat. <laughs> when it's all over, I mean, I must tell you, in all due respects, I am not a young man anymore, and I've applied every bit of knowledge that I've learned into an hour and a half with this bird. I mean, I have done the bee's knees. And I'm laying over in a fag art or all that. I went, uh, how did I do? She said, you can have anything off the bottom shelf. <laughs> stories. Geezer walked into a pub, there was a table there, and just one table, you know, empty chair. The fella said, do you mind what I sit down, mate? He said, sit down, my old son, help yourself. He said, thanks very much, would you like a drink? He said, you haven't got to buy me a drink because I told you to sit down. He said, when I buy you a drink. He bought him a drink, he bought him one back. Eleven o'clock, these two are smashed out of their brains. The one that was originally there turned around to his newfound friend, he said, have you got a car? He said, yeah. He said, let's go around my house for a nightcap. Come on, come on. He's got up, he walked two paces, he fell up right in his ear hole. What up, how it's come now, Frobo, Frobo. <laughs> His mate went to help him, he said, brother, will leave me alone, come on, come on. He's got another two steps, he fell over in his chin, spank, yard and half, yard and half, yard and half, chin. <laughs> His mate said, I have the sneaking suspicion you're drunk. He said, I'm not bloody drunk. Where's the car? They've got to the car, opened up the car door, the door's hit right in the mouth. Spalosh! His railings have gone all up and down the gutter. There is claret rushing down his gums. His mate said, you are drunk. 
He said, I'm not drunk. Drive the car. I got round to his house, opened up the car door, he fell out of his nose. Spank! It's wound up round there. There's blood rushing down his back. He's staggered to his feet. He's gone straight to a lamppost. Crunch! All these ribs are gone. He's fell over his lip on the pavement. The lips flapping about in the wind. He's smothering me to tell him blood. He's made. He said, look, he said, you are drunk. He said, what I'll do, I'll ring, I'll ring the bell and your wife can put you to bed and I'll see you tomorrow. State of this geezer the following morning. <laughs> His wife said, are you all right, love? Uh, 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 I must have got drunk last night. He ain't drunk. Drunk, you were pissing out your brains. You come home without your wheelchair. <laughs> another fella, another classic gang. He said, whenever you've seen Dave, he said, no, I haven't. He said, he's dead. He said, what are you talking about? He's dead. I was drinking with him last night. He said, he's dead. He said, he can't be. He said, he is. He said, what happened? He said, when he left you, he got in his car, he went home. He's drunk. He's missed the bloody brakes. He's gone across his front lawn, knocked down a fence, hit the cars, it crashed straight into the concrete steps, shot him right through the steel roof. He's gone upstairs to the window above. All the glass in the window has come down in great slivers and stabbed him. Stabbed him, stabbed him, stabbed him. <laughs> stabbed him in the back. Oh, he said, what a way to go. No, 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 he said. He got away with that, he got away with that. <laughs> what he's done then, he staggered to his feet in a room and he's grabbed over that big glass chandelier to pull himself up. It's come away and all the glass, the crystal, has just slashed his face and it slashed slashed and slashed his face and neck. He's grabbed hold of the wardrobe, that's come over him, smashed him and smashed and smashed <laughs> and smashed him into the floor. Oh, he said, what a way to die. No, 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 he said. He got away with that, he got away with that. What he's done then, he's pushed the wardrobe off himself, gone out to the loft, pulled down the loft ladder, he's gone up into the bloody loft, to try and get this light fitting back. His foot's gone through the floor. He's put his hand out to steady himself. He's got hold of that great big header tank, 500 gallons, and it's come over on him and smashed him. <laughs> smashed him right through the ceiling and come down. All these ribs, a thigh, tibia, fibia, and both feet smashed to pieces. Oh, he said, what a terrible way to go. No, 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 he's there. <laughs> He got away with that. What he's done then, he's staggered to his feet, he's caught his head between the banisters, he's rolled down the stairs, the banisters have gone all over, he's got two through his heart, one up his aris, four through his neck. Oh, he said, what a way to die. He said, no, 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 he got. He said, hang on a minute. He said, no, I'm going to tell you. All the water's gushing into the bloody kitchen. He's tripped over the lino. His head's gone through the wall by all the wires. They've all wrapped round his head. 450,000 volts. Burnt to a crisp. Oh, he said, I can't believe it. What a way to die. No, 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 no. He said, hang on a fucking minute. <laughs> How did he die? He said, I'll shot him. <laughs> he said, what did you shoot him for? He said, he was wrecking the fucking place. Now we go far away. Oh. Oh, he's had to get out for half hour, get away from my old woman, I tell you that. Oh. Said to me this morning, what does reincarnation mean? I said, it means that when you die, you come back as something else. I said, ow. Oh. When I come back, I want to come back as a pig. I said, you ain't fucking listening to me, are you? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's her birthday last week. I said, what do you want for your birthday? She said, what a divorce. I said, I won't think I'm fucking spending that much. <laughs> this may sound like a chauvinist remark, ladies. I don't mean it if it is. I don't, but I don't ask no ass fellas. Why do we get married? Why do we bother? Why don't we just find a woman we hate and buy them a fucking house? <laughs> Oh, 
And you girls sitting out there tonight, you look lovely. I mean that, it's not bullshit, you look lovely. When you all come out, you smell nice, you know, you put perfume behind your ears. You know what my old woman used to put behind her ears to attract the men? Her fucking legs. <laughs> First night I met her, I mean I should have told it. Went back to her flat, she went, have you ever made love like an Oregon? Oh, what? Huh? She like Oregon. I went, no, I ain't. She won't have a go. I went, yes, I'll have a go. She went, I'm going to get undressed, go in the kitchen, get a big bowl of water. I've come back from the kitchen with a big bowl of water. She's laying on this bed, legs ten miles ten. She went, flick the water on me. So I went, watch me, flick the water on me. So there I was. Ch -ch 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 -ch. I said, what's this? She went, that's the rain, that's the rain from the hurricane. I said, oh, the rain, I see. So at the same time, keep opening the closer door. I said, go, she went, open the closer door. Ba bang, bang, ba bang, bang, bang. Ba bang, 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 bang. I said, well, actually, that's the thunder, that's the thunder from the hurricane. Oh, I said, so at the same time, keep switching the light on and off. So there I was. I said, what's that? That's the lightning, that's the lightning from the hurricane. So I'm ready now. I said, I'm sorry, I can't fuck in this weather. Oh, God. But although, although she knew a lot about sex, I said, have you ever had one of these vibrators? She went, no, I ain't. I said, you finished, you haven't a go? She went, yeah. <laughs> We've gone down to this sex shop, and there they were, all them vibrators. Huge ones, small ones, ones that wriggle at the top. Black ones, big ones, massive ones. She said, I'll have that red one there. I went, turn it, and that's a fucking fire extinguisher. <laughs> I married her. I married a man. Stand at the church, the vicar said to me, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I said, I do. The vicar said, let me fucking ask you that again, son. <laughs> Walking down the aisle, someone threw an old shoe. I said, am I well, that's lucky? He said, what's lucky? I said, someone's thrown an old shoe. So what's lucky about it? I said, is it your mother in the fucking mouth? <laughs> Oh, that's horrible bastards here. Oh. And I mean, I must own up. I mean, they pay for the wedding. I'm mean, the old tradition going back all them years ago. But Christ Almighty, did she embarrass us all? They laid on the little band, and about 11 o'clock at night, the bands had a break, you know what I mean? So right prolific at that time was that game, Mr. and Mrs. Well, my mum and dad's got up, and I found out they didn't even fucking know each other at all. Right? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Her mum and dad's got up. So we put the old girl with a pair of bleeding earphones on on a record plane and said to the old man, right, now, where would you like to go if you could, anywhere in the world with your holidays? I said, no, we always do the same thing. Down to Western Suit and Mare, been going down there for years now. Know the landlady? Well, we said, right, that's it. Right, Western Suit and Mare. Now, what do you like for breakfast? Oh, he said, that's simple. He said, always had the same thing. I like a big fry up, you know what I mean? Eggs, bacon, tomatoes, always finish up with a great big you know, mug of sweet tea. He said, that's all right. He said, now, where's the most daring place you've ever made love to your wife? He said, no, behave yourself. That's a bit personal, wasn't it? No, no, it's only a bloody game. Where's the most daring place you've made love to your wife? Well, he said, uh, <laughs> in the back of my old dormobile when we was calling. Right, done, we'll find it. When I sat down, she come out and said, right, the old man says answer three questions. You get the three questions right. It was a bottle of champagne. So what does your old man like for breakfast? Oh, she said, that's very easy. He always has the same thing. Eggs, bacon, tomatoes, big fry. I always finish it up with a big sweet cup of tea. He said, that's what your old man said. Right. Now, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go for your holidays most of all? She said, that's an easy question. Oh, well, we always go down to Western Suit with me. Been going there for 15 years now. Weather's always nice. Know the landlady. He said, that's right. That's what the old man said. Now, where is the most daring place you've made love with your old man? She went, I ain't answering that. He said, come on, it's only a bleak. No, no, she said, I ain't answering that. And he shouted out, go on, go, I've already told him. Oh, she went, all right then. Up my bum. <laughs> Oh, she's such an ugly cow. 
The only difference between my mother-in-law's face and a rock violer's face is lipstick. <laughs> when the kids were small, we used to keep a photo on the mantelpiece, kept the kids away from the fire, you know what I mean? <laughs> Still around, said to me last week, when I die, will you pour a bottle of whiskey over my grave? I said, yeah, if I can pass it through me kidneys first. <laughs> Father-in-law, thick as two planks. To give you an idea about my father-in-law, he had a job. He was a long-distance lorry driver on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> he went for another job. The former said, can you make tea? He said, of course I can make tea. He said, can you drive a forklift truck? He said, how big's a fucking teapot? <laughs> thick, listen to this. He went to the NEC Motor Show at Birmingham and spent four and a half hours walking round the fucking car park. <laughs> How about that? I went round his house the other day. I said, Jesus Christ, did your ceilings are high. He said, yeah, Mum wanted two rooms knocked into one. <laughs> Honeymoon was a total shambles. I'll come back pissed out, the old woman's bleeding unpacked and I shouldn't have gone for a drink and she's lying here asleep, you know what I mean? And I'm doing a blouse and I'm going, yeah. <laughs> Go on and have some of that. <laughs> yeah, fucking water. <laughs> she woke up, I said, what are you doing or something? Playing with your tits, was it? <laughs> she went, you what? That bloody language. She said, what is the matter with you? This is our honeymoon night. It's a special night. If you're going to talk to me on a night like this, what's the rest of our marriage going to be like? Go on, get out on the balcony. I said, look, it was only a game. Get out on the balcony. I was going to go, 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 <laughs> One o'clock in the morning, I'm standing out on the balcony, freezing me plums off. Two doors down there, open up a geezer come out. I said, you're right, mate. He said, no, I bleed and ain't all right. I'm on me honeymoon. I said, I know you feel bad. What are you doing out here? He said, the old woman's getting undressed. She took her niggas off and all I said, and she got a big ass and she threw me out. <laughs> Eight doors up there open up, a geezer come out. I said, but you put your foot in it. He said, no, but I fucking could have done his thing. <laughs> it, was, it was horrendous. It really was. And we used to have, I mean, like a lot of young people out there, no matter if you're married or single, sex is a wonderful thing. Bloody marvellous. Me and my woman, we've done it all as youngsters. You know, we used to have mirrors all over the bleeding bedroom ceiling. They still use a mirror now, but I hold it under her nose to see if she's fucking breathing these days. <laughs> I remember one night I said to her, do you fancy doing the wheelbarrow position? You think what? I said, the wheelbarrow position. So now you do that, I said, you take your clothes off, you lay face down on the floor, I pick you up by your legs and... She said, OK, she said, but for fuck's sake, don't push me past me mother's, will you? <laughs> All them years ago, I used to call her my little kitten, my little bunny, you know. Over the years, the animals have got fucking bigger and bigger. <laughs> I'm up to your fat old cow at the moment. <laughs> we went away last weekend for the Saturday and Sunday. Five suitcases. What is it with you girls? Five suitcases. There she is in the mirror getting the dresses out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think this dress makes you look fat? I said, no, it's your fat arse and your fat chin that makes you look fucking fat. <laughs> oh, man. We had a bloody good time in them days, but we don't have sex anymore on religious grounds. She reckons she's Jewish and I'm a pig. <laughs> Do you know what my wife's idea of oral sex is? It's to sit me down and fucking talk me out of it. And when we do, mate, I've got to wear one of those illuminated condoms. Oh. That's so if the light goes, you can still read a book. You know? <laughs> oh, 
that's awful, man. She said, come on, let's make love, and I can't stand it, I really can't. I mean, she's a bloody big woman. She insists on wearing those fishnet tights, you know. Every time she takes them off, her ass looks like a waffle. <laughs> I've done my best. I've climbed up this mound of flesh, you know. Usual thing happened, me fucking ears popped. I thought, oh. I said, can I turn the light out? I said, why? I said, the bowl's burning me ass. <laughs> and I'm laying there. I've got half in, just half inch and a dozen wrinkles. I couldn't think of anybody. She went, do you want me to get on top? I said, don't be ridiculous. It won't go down. It ain't going to fucking go up. <laughs> She said, come on, we haven't had kinky sex for a long time. So I'll tell you what you do. Take the illuminated condom, go into the bedroom, put it on, turn the light out, and I'll come and leap on you. <laughs> I put it on the bedpost. <laughs> yeah. We was in a restaurant the other night, and I must own up the geezer was across the road. He didn't say nothing until we finished eating. He came out and said, Pardon me, sir, do I detect a London accent? My woman said, what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> Gentleman wants to know we come from London. Oh, wow. <laughs> I said, yeah, we come from London, Governor. He said, I used to go to London a lot. I was stationed at Lakenheath in the American Air Force. I used to go to London on my furloughs. My woman said, what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> said he used to use London when he was stationed at Lakenheath. When he had to leave, he used to go to London. Oh, wow. <laughs> And I used to use a, room, use a room up there called the Hammersmith Pally. Is that still going? Well, was that what he's saying? What he's saying? He said he used to use the Hammersmith Pally. Ow, ow. So I got to tell you, man, I met a girl there one night, got back to her place, we stripped off. God damn. She had tits like slightly as nail bags. They were. And when I. It didn't touch the side. Mom said, what he's saying? What he's saying? He said he thinks he knows you. <laughs> One thing I will say about her, she, she does keep up with bloody fashion. About four weeks ago, she shaved her pubic, you know, into a nice heart shape. Lovely it was. Ruined our fucking lawnmower, but it was... <laughs> and the other nice thing about my mission, I must own it, she loves animals. Our place is like a menagerie. They're all we got bleeding parrots, dogs, fucking sheep, chickens. Someone rang her up the other day, one of these uh, animal rights activists. They've broke into a cancer research thing, stole a beagle. Brought out of my woman, you want it? Yeah, I want it, I want it. Costing me a fortune. Smokes fucking 80 fags a day. Then <laughs> uh, the kids came along. <laughs> Matter of fact, my woman was so long in labour that the monkey shaved her twice. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, funny kids. My Michael, three years old, he came up. He said, Dad, what's testicles? I said, bollocks. He said, fuck your last mum. <laughs> you got a cigarette spare me, old son? I oh, know it's a bit of a liberty. Will you... You ain't got none left? Thanks, darling. No, I right, should do me that. Thanks, boy. Bit of a liberty, boy. Hey? Hey? That's gorgeous. <coughs> Jesus Christ. <coughs> Are you sure? <coughs> At the age of about nine years old, my daughter asked the inevitable question, you know, where the babies come from. And you girls seem to be equipped to answer that question. I mean, us fellas ain't got a clue. She's going to come out with a stock answer. What happens is, Dad, darling, that Daddy plants a seed in Mummy's tummy. Oh, she said, do you have to swallow it? <laughs> you know, only if you want a new dress. <laughs> <laughs> they are funny kids. Little boy and a little girl sitting in the bath. The little girl said, little boy, what's that? He says, my winkle. 
She said, can I play with it? He said, piss off, you broke yours off. <laughs> Two little boys, seven year old, they're both having a wee against the bush. One little boy said, the other little boy said, your will is different than mine. He said, that's because I'm Jewish. <laughs> I, yeah. What's that mean then? He said, it means I've had a bit cut off the end. I, <laughs> when was that? He said, when I was five weeks old. He said, did it hurt? He said, did it hurt? Couldn't fucking walk for 18 months. <laughs> Little boy walks in class and says, what's masturbation mean? He said, masturbation, that's a mouthful. We said, no, that's a fucking blowjob. <laughs> Even when they get older, my son, 15 years old, going out on his first date, suit and a boot, and he's got a torch in his hand. I said, where are you going? Son? He said, I'm going courting, Dad. I said, he used to go courting when I was your age, but I never took a torch. He said, no, well, look at you fucking wound up with. <laughs> oh, I, I can plainly remember my school days. You know, lots of us can. I remember prolific things about my younger life. I remember in school, teachers asked to come up with a story that had a moral. I forget what the other kids said, but I know what I said because it's perfectly true. I said, my granddad was in the First World War and he was in a trench with 12 mates and, and a shell hit the trench and it killed all my granddad's mates. My granddad was the only one left and he had 15 bullets in his gun and he, and he had a bayonet and a bottle of whiskey and he fought in for a penny, in for a pound and he drank the bottle of whiskey down in one and he went over the top with 15 bullets, he shot 15 Germans and he stabbed another 35 to death with his bayonet. It's well, Michael, that's a gory story. What's the moral to that? I said, what's the moral? Don't fuck about with my granddad when he's pissed. <laughs> Another classic story. Dad said to his boy, I'm going to take you down to South End today, son, but not like we're doing that nowadays in a car. Like we did in the old days on the on on Chuff Chuff. They've gone down to the bleeding at South End on the Chuff Chuff. They got off the train and the boy went, Dad, can I have an ice cream? Dad, can I take, can I take? He said, yes, Don, you can have an ice cream, but don't go run away with yourself. You just got off the Chuff Chuff. There's the ice cream. Go, he said, thanks, Dad. It's all up. His hoods are running down his shirt. Fifteen minutes later, there's another sign there, rocks. Go, on, Dad, he said, can I have a rock? Dad, can I take, can I take? He said, hang on, boy. Yes, you can have a rock, but don't go over the top. You just got off the Chuff Chuff. You had an ice cream, now you want a rock. He said, I want a rock. He said, there's the rock, darling. It's all crumbling down his strides. His hands are stuck to his face. 25 minutes later, there's another sign there. Donkey rides. Go on, Dad. He said, can I have a donkey ride, Dad? Can I take, can I take? He said, hang on, boy, hang on. He said, look, you've had a ride down to the chuff chuff. You've had an ice cream, you've had a stick of rock. Now you want a donkey ride. He said, I want a donkey ride, Dad. He said, get on the fucking donkey. Get on it. He's on the donkey, they're just coming off. There's another sign there. These donkeys are for sale. Oh, he said, buy me the donkey, they buy me the donkey. He said, hang on a minute, boy, now listen. You've had a ride down the chuck up ice cream, stick a rock, donkey ride, now you want to buy the donkey. He said, buy me the donkey, then he said, I'll buy you the bloody thing. They got the donkey on the box car on the train going home. He said, Some way you're gonna call it. He said, Dad, I'm gonna call it Wanker. He said, Wanker? You've had a ride down the chuff chuff, ice cream, stick a rock, dog a rope, bulge on a donkey, now you want to call it wanker? He said, I want to call it wanker. He said, call it what you like. They get it back to the house. He said, where are you going to keep it, son? He said, Dad, I'm going to keep it in my bedroom. He said, with the bleeding edge up you are. What are you talking about? You've had a ride down the chuff chuff, ice cream, stick a rock, dog a rope, bulge on a donkey, you've called it wanker. There's no way you're going to keep it in the bedroom. He said, where can I keep it? He said, don't worry, son, I built you a shed. The old man went outside, built this great big shed, put the donkey in it. That night there was a thunderstorm and the lightning went for her lash. And the thunder went cut her runch. The donkey's got bed's work all up over gone the shed and he's had it across the field. Now the boy has seen this, he's running to his dad's prison. He said, Dad, Dad, wake us off. He said, Now fucking turn it in, son. You gotta wipe it. Oh Christ. My memory takes me back like all of us. You know, I'm a granddad now, and it's a wonderful time of my life. It really is. You know, you've got kids on. I'm not trying to get anybody's on anybody's side and be people. But, you know, the hardest job in the world, without a doubt, the old man's got to go to work. I know that. But, Mum, being an housewife, what a bloody... Old. You're there 24 hours a day. You're bringing up the kids. That's the one point I'm trying to make. 
You're there with the kids, the old man's out, so you've got a stronger bond most of the time with the kids. But when you become a granddad, you can give all that love and attention that you never had time to give to your own kids. And it's a wonderful time of life. My grandson came up to me the other day, he said, Granddad, will you do your frog impression? I said, what, darling? He said, do your frog impression? I said, what are you talking about, sweetheart? He said, well, Nanny said, when you croak, we're going to all go to Disney World. <laughs> Talking about the cycle going right the way around. I remember I was four or five years old, sitting in the bath with my grand. I said, Granddad, how come all the hair on your head's all grey and the hair around your winkle is all dark? He said, I've got no fucking worries down here, boy. <laughs> Oh, he was a funny bastard, my old granddad. His mate come up to him one day, he said, hey, Charlie, is it a rumour going around? You've got a 12-inch dick. He said, I oh, know, I'll fucking start it. He said. <laughs> Huge man, seven foot tall near enough. He was five foot, six foot ten. Only job he ever had in his life. He was a lifeguard down at South End. Couldn't swim a stroke, but he could fucking walk out a long way. Oh, huh? <laughs> lazy bastard, though. Prostitute come up to him once, did you fancy a blowjob? He said, no, 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 that might affect me dull money. Oh. <laughs> Was he cunning or what? Wouldn't have none of that. And when people go on you, you know, it happens to us all. We all get old and you watch people get old around you think, oh, Christ. I remember going to see my granddad, well, four or five months before he died, and he, he, he was right in a bad state. He went, oh, son, I went, oh, are you, granddad? He said, you know what, boy, he said, all my life I've never believed in the Lord. He said, but I've started to believe in him now. I said, where's that granted? He said, well, when I get out of the bed of a night, don't I go to wee? I go to the toilet, open the door, and God turns the light on for me. And when I've had a wee, he shut the door and he turns the light off for me. I'm believing in God. I went to my own house and the old boy's losing it. And he reckons that God turns the light for him. And she went, oh, he's been pissing in the fridge again. <laughs> There are, some, there are some gags that people tell and there's some gags you can't tell. This is the ones that I never normally tell and this is true. The only reason I'm telling it because I, I think it's funny. On, this, this geezer got a bird in the bed and they're fumbling away. They didn't know too much about it. And she said to him, your friends are 69 and my mum is 69. She said, what's that? He said, well, I'm going down to you, you're going down to me at the same time. I can have some of that, he said. <laughs> so there he is there, giving a one round of all of death. <laughs> all of a sudden she went. <laughs> he went. <laughs> she went, don't stop, don't stop. He said, you're all right. All right. She went, don't stop, don't stop. They said, all right, all right. Don't stop. He said, no, no, no. He said, I couldn't stand another fucking 67 of them. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> House in Ireland, flames leaping up at a bleeding air and a woman appeared at the window with a baby and the crowd went, throw the baby down. She said, I came to be killed and to be killed. Don't be a pilchard, troll the baby down. She said, I came to be killed and to be killed. Out of the crowd, he's the business. I am the Irish international goalkeeper. I've never dropped a ball in my life. Troll the baby down. With that, she threw the baby out the window. As the baby was coming down, there was a gust of wind. And he took the baby to one side. The goalie leapt in the air. And he snatched the baby from death. The crowd went to rave him mad. Hooray, hooray. He bounced the baby twice and kicked out. I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas. Nearly there. 
Don't know what you do in this game, ladies and gentlemen. There's no way you can please everybody, but I had some idea. Well, you must have had some idea when you come down here, and I, especially you girls, like, you know, what I did. But if it got a bit near the mark, girls, I do apologise and uh, hope there was something at least there you could uh, have a grin about. So I uh, wish you a Merry Christmas. You know, there's something we can do for everybody. I always say this because I mean it with great sincerity. It don't cost a copper coin and it makes this world go round so much better. Be nice to each other. Good night, darlings. God bless you. Thanks very much.